Welcome in Campo and Joe on the air. And we're finally going to be able to talk about the draft. Well, wait a minute. We've been talking about the draft all this time. No, we actually get to talk about draft picks. Welcome in, Coach. Good you to ready see to you. ready to go? Oh, absolutely. Hey, we've been talking about this for three months. <laughs> Let's finish it off today all right, and then Cam get ready for what's going to be in the future here yeah. with our football team. You're going to be able to break it down with some of the, you know, Coach's eyes as far as some of the picks. So we've got all sorts of things to get into. You, Josie from XL Primetime, Coach Campo, you know him as now a Duvaller, but also head coach of the Dallas Cowboys back in the day and a longtime assistant in the NFL and the college game. And the cool thing you'll be able to do for – all the listeners, viewers, me, is kind of educate us a little bit on how draft night, the three days of drafting, how it unfolds, what went through your mind when some of these selections were made, and we'll look at the draft grades. So let's just set this up real quick, Coach. I'm just going to give you my frustrations, right? and then you're going to maybe talk me off of the ledge just a little bit, okay? Maybe. Maybe. You may be right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like Jaguar fan out there, I'm pretty sure most people looked at the first round draft pick and said, Cam, you made us make that selection with the impending suspension. Cam Robinson, we don't know how long he's going to be suspended. But before we hit the other draft picks, zero in on the 27th pick overall. Did you like how Balky maneuvered from 24 down to 27? And do you like the pick a lot? Well, under the circumstances, it, there was no question in my mind that they had to make that pick. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not necessarily a negative. Right. I really think they would have made that pick at 24. Mm -hmm. So the ability to back up was a smart move at that point. They got back to 27. They picked up some extra gaff, uh, uh, draft pa uh, capital, mm -hmm. and, and that gave them a chance to get a couple of other guys late. Now, I... I like the pick as well because it's a pick for the future. And knowing what you know now, we have talked about this a bunch. Cam Robinson is an expensive line item on the salary cap next year. Right. So they were already thinking about the reality of saying goodbye to him. So it makes sense. You're drafting for now. You're drafting for the future. The thing that frustrates me the most, and it's just the way it went down, was that you looked at him and you said, okay, is he our future at what side? Is Walker Little going to immediately step over? How long is Cam going to be suspended for? There's a lot of gray area there. Well, there is a lot of gray area. And, and uh, you know, I, I've always felt right along that even with Cam not suspended, we mm -hmm. you know, we've been talking about, I feel like the third tackle is extremely important. Those right. guys are very hard to find. That's a thin room to begin with, right? Absolutely. And and they're hard to find. You big guys that can, that can handle these edge rushers today's mm -hmm. game. You know, you find one that you think can do that, Right. Uh, that's a premium, regardless of whether he's a third tackle for one year, two years, or whether or not he's one of the starters. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, with the uh, specter of the the suspension, right. this guy's probably a starter. Mm -hmm. All right. So I figure you and I are going to be able to get out. We're going to watch some OTAs. We'll be able to talk about, as we go forward in the offseason, what this team might do with Walker immediately at left and Anton immediately at right. We'll know a little bit more as we see some stuff. But just right. on the surface, what 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 are you thinking right now? I think they're going to, uh, at this point right now, I think they're going to put Little at left. Okay. And the reason I say that is this guy may be better than Little. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a pretty darn good athlete, and he's been playing left tackle. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is to put him over there, he's on this, the blind side of – uh, Trevor mm -hmm. Lawrence, without knowing what's going on at yeah. this point. So yeah. when they line up the first day of 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 OTAs, mm -hmm. I believe Walker Little is going to be at left tackle, and he he's going to be a right tackle in in uh, competition with uh, the new guy that just came in, Wells, right. and whoever else is around there. But to me, uh, it, when it's all over, we don't know if that's going to be the final uh, positioning. You right. know, we'll we'll know after OTAs probably mm -hmm. what they're thinking. Yeah, I I, I want to see how it unfolds. I want to know how long that suspension is going to be, but we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. All right, so they answered the main need, and you have taught us through all of our draft conversations. You want to go for the best player that's available, and if need comes in, then then that's going to help a need area. 
So let's get to the next couple of picks because this is where I, I'm i scratching my head a little bit. I love the idea that they went with another tight end. It's not a move tight end that matches Evan Ingram. But then they go to the third round and they go get a running back in Tank Bigsby when I feel like it's a pretty good running back room right now. So before we get to the fourth round, it took till the fourth round to draft a defensive player. Before we get there, what did you think of the tight end and the running backs? Well, I, first of all, I think they went with the board, and and the tight end position was a need. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the board w was right, uh, they took the guy that they felt that was the next on the board Right. that gives them a chance to get a guy that's going to help them. And again, this is another now future pick, okay. you know, because he has some of the attributes of, of – uh, Ingram, mm -hmm. and you know he's on a franchise tag. You don't know what's going to happen to him after this year. Right, but he is a little bit of a combination. He can block. He's a willing blocker. He's not a a, a, a strictly a blocker. And mm -hmm. a lot of people wanted uh, Washington, the kid mm -hmm. from Clemson, Darnell Washington, and yep. he was an inline tight end. Period. You know this guy is a, a good run after catch guy. He can catch the football. He's a good athlete. Runs. Runs four seven, mm -hmm. but he's two hundred and fifty something pounds. So right. he, you know, with with the guys over they've got over there coaching, mm -hmm. he can learn to be a good run blocker. I think he has the combination. He can be an H back, but he can also be an inline guy. So mm -hmm. to me, they've got Farrell, who's an inline guy, in my opinion. Yes, you got these two guys. You can have two pass catching tight ends on the uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. To me, the key there was at first. You know, without knowing, I was thinking that from my study that we were going to draft Schoonmacher, mm -hmm. the kid from Michigan at tight right, end. Right. Well, when we backed up, Cowboys took Schoonmacher, Macher, mm -hmm. and uh, Strange was the next guy on the list. So, so to me, I thought to my mind, maybe they overreacted mm -hmm. with that pick back. Decision you know, step to move back. back. Right. But in talking to some people... There's a lot of people in the league that thought those guys were right on the same spot. So okay. to me, it wasn't that big a deal. All right. You're talking about two Big Ten tight ends, move, size. They can block, like you said, in line. But you're basically saying Schoonmacher and uh, Britton Strange, basically the same guy, at least how you, or at least what the talk was around that pick. Right. No question. And so to me, uh, it was another calculated backup to mm -hmm. get to thir uh, to sixty. Was it sixty or sixty one? Whatever. You yeah, was they picking. were right there picking at the sixty um, first spot. Sixty first, mm -hmm. and and I think that was an okay move. If in fact those guys are very similar to each other. All right, eighty eight. Now uh, Bigsby, it's a it can be a little bit of a head scratcher. Mm -hmm. To me, when you pick a guy, uh, that's definitely off the draft board. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where he was pushed okay. in all the mocks. So good value. Good value. And I think uh, from what I've seen of him, he creates a, a, a versatile situation at running back. You now have a guy that can take reps off of ETN mm -hmm. to give him an opportunity to to not get beat up. Right. And he's a guy that's a, kind of the thunder of thunder and lightning. And mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a value pick if yeah. it's number one on the board. Now, were there other guys on there that that might have been better at other positions? You know, it, it, I don't think this was a real deep draft. I, I don't know that there was a lot of guys there that you would pick in place of him. Right behind him. Not saying these are any one of the guys that you should have been looking at, but this is what we always have to do. The tight end, Darnell Washington, came after him, but they had already made their tight end selection. Right. So they made a declaration there. They felt that the other two were were – the, the same type of guy. Jordan Battle, safety out of Alabama, a little bit further down. You can take a look at a couple of other guys. Defensive interior lineman, Kobe Turner, he went right after him. There aren't a whole lot of other guys. There was a, a couple of cornerbacks that were taken down near the bottom of the third round. That's the thing that you might be thinking about. Makai Blackman uh, out of Southern Cal. I don't know if you know a whole lot about him, but those are the types of guys that people will be looking at. But if we're being honest, there was not a whole lot of cornerbacks that went right after Tank Bixby. No. That's and, your and, point. Yeah, and the key is that most of those guys went before that pick. Yeah. So uh, we were told that they were trying to move back into the round. And if that was the case, it probably was to get two third-round picks and mm -hmm. take one of the corners. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it didn't feel – it didn't. 
it fell wrong. Okay. On the, the draft fell wrong, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And the best guy on the board in that situation was a guy that that uh, everybody would say, well, why are they taking a running back? But he improves the football team, in he my does. opinion. He does. I think the other thing that I got out of this coach is that we all try and figure out whether Doug Peterson and Trent Baalke, uh, are they simpatico with all their thinking? And I think they've proven to us and to the fan base they can work together. They have uh, produced positive things together. But I came out of the first three, like Thursday night and Friday night, and I'm like, oh, Doug Peterson's running this football team. He's getting his offensive wish list, and he's going to – I don't know whether he's going to try and defend you to the hilt, but he's going to try and outscore you. Well, there's no question that that this league is about putting points on the board. Yeah. You know, and and my whole feeling is— I love that part of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, you're not going to win in the playoffs. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. In the AFC, you're not going to win in the playoffs unless you score 30 points. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's going to go into that playoff game and and— win a game 14 to 12. Right. It's not happening. Right. So you've got to have guys that can put points on the board, and that's going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this uh, Trevor Lawrence, yeah. it's not just going to be here this year. Yeah. He's going to be here next year, the year after, the year after that, hopefully, and right on yeah. down the line. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to have firepower, and you have to protect. So, yeah. you know, you look at the picks they made— all of them improve right. that side of the football. Right. At the very least, and we don't know how it's going to shake out with the line, but let's just put Walker, little left tackle, protecting Trevor's blind side. Now another weapon to help ETN uh, not get banged up and then have another guy that you can line up in line. And you 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 tell the, the fans this because this is what I always try and tell people. You got to move tight end and Evan Ingram. There's no secrecy about what he plans to do when he walks to the line of scrimmage. He is going out for a pass. Right. He is not going to be in line trying to chip on a defensive end or anything like that. The other guy walks up to the line of scrimmage. Defenses kind of kind of figure out what they're trying to do. That is what I think Doug Peterson wants back in his playbook. Yeah, and and uh, they didn't really have that with Man Hurts. Mm -hmm. They knew when he was over there, he yeah. was blocking. Exactly. Okay, and this guy was moving and running. Right. Now you've got a guy that has an either or situation mm -hmm. and that puts pressure on the defense. Yeah. You you know, you got another pass catcher that's going to be locked up on a linebacker for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got Ingram in there. Yeah. A lot of times if they went too tights, mm -hmm. you still had a nickel back on the field covering Ingram because mm -hmm. he was going to be in the slot. Now this guy can go to the slot. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was something like 40% of his snap strange we're talking about. Right. He was lined up out in the slot. Mm -hmm. So he's a slot he can and move. an inline yeah. guy. Yeah. That's 50%. Yeah. 50% he's in line, 50% he's in the slot. Right. So it puts pressure on the defense. And, and to follow what you're saying as far as putting pressure on them, the size that he has when he goes out to the slot really makes things difficult for Absolutely. the defense. Absolutely. You're blocking downfield. Yeah. That's his strength. Mm -hmm. If you look at Strange... He is not only a guy that can catch and break tackles and, mm -hmm. and make things happen, but his blocking on the perimeter right. when he's out. Exceptional. There, there's not going to be anybody lined up out there that, that can handle him. So, you're, going to have a, you're going to have a safety down on him or right. somebody out there that he's going to be able to block, and he's a good blocker downfield. Yeah. I, I like hearing that. I think, uh, they, I think they love hearing that. Right. Because the other, the other guys I'm thinking of, as you're saying it, that will love hearing that, not even Trevor so much. Zay, yeah. Kirk, Ridley, yep. all the guys that might be able to catch a little slip pass yep. and then have that guy down the yeah, field the quick, trucking quick somebody. screen stuff mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, he really gives you an advantage. Yeah. There's no question. All right. So I love the uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the first half of the draft as a B. Okay. Yes. I may not go B plus, but I'm gonna give it a B. Yeah. And and it's only because I, you know, I'm a little not I'm not crazy about the running back because I feel like they've got they already have four decent players. We don't know what Dearness Johnson is going to be. Right. We don't know if Snoop Connor is going to make this team, but we do know that Jamichael Hastings is pretty is is a is already proven he's a reliable guy. But I'm going to at least give Dougie keys to the offense. You can do what you want, coach. You can do what you want. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, 
you know, I, I think all three of those guys can play in the league and mm-hmm. be a starter. Mm-hmm. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah. That's the best way to look at it. All three of those guys will be starting players mm-hmm. for this football team somewhere along the line. Right. And we have seen dynamic offenses with multiple guys coming out of the backfield making plays. Absolutely. So this will not be uh, anything brand new. So let's get to the other half of this. And this is where I, I got a little frustrated. You got pick number 121, and then a little further down, you've got pick number 130. <clears throat> so you're basically picking in you know two selections in about a 10 spot range. They go linebacker Ventrell Miller, 121. Then they come back with a defensive tackle who you know, or excuse me, I'm going to call him a defensive end slash inside guy. I want you to tell me a little bit more about Tyler Lacey. I liked. Tyler Lacey as a selection, did not like Ventrell Miller as a selection. Well, Ventrell Miller was a little bit of a head scratcher. And, and uh, you know, I don't know, you know, I didn't see enough of him. I know he's been injured. Mm-hmm. He's been, you know, I don't think he's got great speed, but he has been fairly productive. He's a, he's a you, baller. You know, he's a football player. And, and you know, my feeling on defense is the, the Deweys of the world. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm are important. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have some guys that are just football players. Right, they don't right. look like they can do this. They don't look like they can do that. Yeah. But for some reason, Dewey gets a bunch of tackles and sure. an in, a couple of interceptions Pops when the he's ball in there. Out. Yeah. And he's a good special teams guy. Now, I don't know at that point, in that particular spot, that's what you go for. But again, that's, that's their feelings. And I can't dispute that. Lacey is another big need for them. Mm-hmm. They don't have depth at the big people mm-hmm. on this, this football is, team. This is what you they haven't got Smoot. About. They lost Smoot. They got Gotsis. He's the only backup tackle that you can say, hey, this guy, you know, and when I say tackle mm-hmm. end in a in a three four, right, is a is a is a big guy. This guy is a big guy and he is very good against the run, mm-hmm. not much of a pass rusher. Mm-hmm. So what you've got is you've got a backup D lineman and in the fourth round, a lot of times that's what you're getting. It's a little bit of a dart, but at the same time, if he has a trait that you really, really like, that's why you make the pick mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I want to see those types of guys affect the passer, get him off his spot, all the things that you and I have talked about. Back to Ventrell Miller, because he was the first of the two that came off in the fourth round. And look, I, as a guy who watches a lot of Gator football, this guy was all over the field. He was a very, very valuable piece. But the other part of it was there weren't a whole lot of other good players around him. And so he didn't necessarily thrive. He's coming off of a Jones fracture, which is a fairly serious foot injury. It's not not a career ender or anything like that, but it's definitely serious. One thing I will also give Ventrell Miller credit for, and I'm looking at Spielberg back here, because I've like Gator fan will remember this. Jaguar fan probably doesn't know this. He was involved in one of the schemes back in the day where a half dozen Gators get suspended. Might even be more than that. Anyway, they were all given credit cards to go into the bookstore and basically oh, charge yes, up whatever I they remember. want. Remember? I remember, And so yes. Ventrell Miller was- How could the- you ever forget <laughs> the classic credit, the Jordan Scarlets of the world? Oh, Jordan, oh yeah. I uh, remember another I wasn't current, even paying attention yeah, to it. Yeah. Well, they're, they're getting the band back together because yeah. another current Jaguar was a part of that as well in Jordan Smith. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Smith is, you know, he left Gaines. Jordan Smith to, was the ringleader on the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, he went to UAB. Mm-hmm. And then and then and he was drafted in the fourth round because Urban recognized his name. Uh, anyway, that I'm glad you said that Spielberg because honestly, Ventrell Miller rehabilitated himself in a lot of ways, just in terms of being a good dude. Got busted for smoking marijuana, <laughs> whatever <laughs> you know. But for the most part, when he was on the football field, coach, he was a player. Now let's fast forward to being a NFL level linebacker. And that's what I worry about because I feel like this was a big enough linebacker room that they didn't need to make him their first defensive pick. Yeah. Again, that's a head scratcher yeah. to me at that pick. Uh, you know, and I don't know how to, you know, say it any differently. I right. mean, the guy, uh, productive, uh, they've got a guy in Quarterman who, mm-hmm. You know he's not gonna he's not gonna get a lot of playing time for this team. Right. He, he's a special teams tough guy. Doesn't run that well. This guy runs a little better. Ventrell runs a little better than mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. does. He's on the last year of his rookie contract. If if Ventrell is on the practice squad or or you know the end of the the fifty three or whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. uh, I, you know that's what they're looking at with him. And I and I, it was probably a little too early for that. 
that pick, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, so this is around the time I get a little frustrated. I'm sure Jaguar fans might have gotten frustrated a little bit as well because they had collected draft picks, and you feel like, okay, we're going to move, maneuver, we're going to make deals, blah, 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 blah. This was a record-setting draft, Coach, for the most trades right, made. Right. They broke the old record in the sixth round. So before we get to the sixth, there is one pick in the fifth round, and that's one of your favorites, Yashir Abdullah. Let's, let's jump in on him. You know what? Uh, I like him, mm -hmm. and and uh, you know I'm excited to see him on the field because he's a poor man's Hassan Reddick, mm -hmm. and I, and I'm being very poor with that because mm -hmm. we don't know how good exactly he's gonna be. he is. Uh, you know six, six one one two thirty two thirty seven yeah. two thirty five four 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 seven in the forty. So the guy's got speed, mm -hmm. athletic, had a big vertical jump. Uh, he's one of those guys that that uh, has the traits of a guy that can uh, make tackles miss, uh, make them overset, do those kind of things. And and as a sub pass rusher, mm -hmm. I'm really really looking forward to seeing what he can do. And that's that's one that I think is a good pick mm -hmm. in that spot. Yeah, see that's good. And it it. I don't know whether it trumps. It definitely trumps the Ventrell Miller selection. Right. I don't know if it trumps Tyler Lacey because we'll see what he does at yeah. a much different position. Well, I think they're two different. Exactly. You know, I mean, two different. Much that, different positions. That can be very, very yeah. good for this football team yeah. if they both hit. Mm -hmm. Now, go into the sixth round. Actually, yeah, let's hit, the, let's hit the sixth because I still want you to give us a grade for the second half of the draft and then the overall. But just kind of rifling through – the round six picks. This is where they were busy. This is where they weren't wheeling and dealing. Parker Washington, I call him half a running back, half a wide receiver. Right. Lower half is a big, strong, powerful dude. What did you think of him? Well, I think he's a good player. Uh, I, I don't think there's any question that that he has value. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing about him, I, I think I would have graded him higher than where they picked. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing about him is, uh, you know, uh, Peterson is a – uh, very re resourceful with what he does with guys. He right. likes having chess pieces that he can use in different spots. And that's the one thing with him. There's really three things he can do, in my opinion. He can get in the slot mm -hmm. and, and, and make some plays because he's big, physical. He's one of the guys that will run over some people. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a running back, exactly. wide receiver kind of a guy, yeah. right? He could also be a third down back. Okay. And all of a sudden, you know, you got a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield and, and can make some things happen mm -hmm. when he gets the ball in his hands. And then the third thing is he might even be able to carry the football. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's versatile. And mm -hmm. I think they really put a lot of stock, both he and Trent, in guys that are versatile. Yeah. I think it, it's kind of like the dart system with the the – Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh guys, mm -hmm. round guys. Mm -hmm. You throw enough darts, you're going to hit something. Well, it's the same thing. If you've got a guy that can play three different positions, your chances of hitting on the guy and yeah. one of them are better than if a guy plays one position right. and he's not good enough, he can't make it. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of one that could be in that situation. Okay. And that's Snoop Connor. Okay. Snoop Connor, if he can't be the thunder mm -hmm. in the backfield. Right. That's it. Where's he going to go? He doesn't play special teams. Yeah, that's a big neg. It really so is. So the versatile guys have a place in those rounds. I was going to follow what you said because that makes that type of guy valuable, like almost like Dewey yeah. in a lot of ways. Dewey's yeah. like, you're you're going to have to – I'm going to outwork your, your idea of cutting me. I'm going to do more things well right. so right. you can't get rid of me. Right. And, and that's, where, that's where that pick – in my opinion, is a good pick in that round. Okay. All right. So uh, I like Parker Washington. What I saw at least was promising. And I, I, I'm like you. I, I want to see what Doug can do. All right. So then we get down to uh, Christian Braswell, cornerback out of Rutgers. Uh, we were joking about this on XL Primetime. <laughs> Matt goes, were they just, you know, were they doing it out of spite? They didn't pick a cornerback until the sixth round. And so I can't help but look at it and know that this team – Gave up a lot of third and eights. Uh, Trey Herndon got worked a little bit. Uh, obviously, when Shaq went down, there was some deficiencies there as far as coverage goes. Anyway, they went with a cornerback in the sixth round. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I thought that was a little late because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like they need a corner. Uh, and and uh, right or wrong, mm -hmm. you know, I always felt that, you know, you've heard me say this many times on shows that 
we don't sit in the meeting room. We don't see a guy every day, what he's doing. And right. they obviously have a higher opinion on on uh, Trey Herndon mm -hmm. than than I do. And and I'm not coaching them. Yeah. You know, so my feeling is that they they might have gone a little earlier if the board sh said that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our opinion on guys, my opinion on, I'm just, I'll throw another guy out there, Rush. Mm -hmm. Rush Darius from South Rush. Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he could have been maybe a guy that they got. I don't remember exactly where he went, he, but it he, was he definitely went, after Bigsby. Yeah, he went in the third round, and it was right after Bigsby. And that was the one, maybe that was the one that got me just a little bit. Yeah. I'll go back and find him. Um, but, yeah, that's the one. You know, my feeling there is you take him, I'm not sure he helps you at nickel. Okay. He's a, you, you see what I'm saying? He's okay. a he's a he's an outside corner and it, maybe they feel really good about some of the young guys they have and mm -hmm. I think that's what you have to go on. I, I, you know, you have to have a little bit of faith that these guys know what they're looking at right. that you're not seeing. The scouts right. have seen them for 2 years. The coaches have seen them for at least four or five games on film. Right. I've seen them one game on film. True, so, true. you know, my feeling on it is that uh, you take those picks in the fourth round, it's a dart. I mean, the sixth round, sixth, mm -hmm. seventh round, mm -hmm. it's a dart. Yeah. And, and if they if they hit, like you said, that is a huge bonus. For what it's worth, there's a safety and a cornerback that are still making a living wearing teal and black that came through the undrafted ranks, and that's Herndon and, and, and Dewey. Yep. So you, you have to give them credit for that. By the way, Darius Rush went in the fifth round after Yasir Abdullah. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Yeah, you know that might have been one that they might have looked at before well, Tyler. Well, if you if you did a, with all our listeners out there mm -hmm. and our mm -hmm. watchers, mm -hmm. if you did a a, a uh, poll, mm -hmm. which one you're going to take? Are you going to take a corner that might make it, or are you going to take a pass rusher that might make it? Well, you're going to you take the pass rusher. Yeah, I think and you that's make, why they went with Abdullah. Yeah, excellent sense there, because this is the other part of this. If they improve their pass rush and they better, they better. They only had, what, 35 sacks. Right. So that will make everybody in the secondary better. Yep. And 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 I'll tell you this right now. Uh, they didn't have one. They don't have one on the roster unless and, – and I believe they're counting on Walker being better, mm -hmm. Josh Allen being better, uh, you know, and, and again, that's – you know, you're, you're taking a guy in Abdullah that might make – be – the. Uh, Arden Key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might be. Uh, if he can grow into that body and, st and maintain his speed, uh, oh, whatever, 10 more pounds, something right. like that right. uh, for a 6-1 frame. All right, hit this other guy real quick, Antonio Johnson. That's another guy you like, and I love the point you made about where he was rated among the safeties in the draft. Well, he's a second-rated safety, and I'm talking pure safety now because I think Branch was a pure safety as well. And mm -hmm. Everybody's got him playing nickel and playing right. corner and playing all these other things. He's a safety, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he's a second-rated safety, and and he's got skills. You get him he's 160th a, he's a, overall. Yeah, well, he's a— That's pretty good. Yeah, and, and that's value because I guarantee you that he, he will make a bunch of tackles. He's a, definitely on special teams. Mm -hmm. He's definitely going to make a bunch of tackles, and I believe he's the, he's the next safety after Rashawn Jenkins is gone. Mm -hmm. He's right. the next start in safety. Hit uh, one or two others as you, as you look at your notes, the, the ones that might have, at the very least, kind of you know made you go either feel good or feel bad uh, as far as the decisions that they made as we round this out. Cooper Hodges uh, and Raymond Yahasik. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know much about those guys, to be honest with you. I'll give you I, know, I, I'll give, I know Hodges is from here. Yeah, he's from Baker which County. Which is good. Uh, he's from Baker County, and I'm gonna uh, if I have it here, I'll show it to you. But did you see the phone call that he had? Uh, I did not. When Doug Peterson uh, called him, uh, the thing I love most about it, and this is not uh, necessarily great for the for the viewer, but it, just see if you can hear this. I'm excellent, Coach. How are you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Sitting in my office last week, you know, thinking maybe a Jacksonville Jaguar. Well, here it comes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. That's the part I love, <laughs> is that he went and said, oh, hell yeah. He oh, hell it, yeah. He said it well, twice. Hell yeah. He said it twice in, in, in 15 seconds with Doug Peterson. Right. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I think there's, uh, when you're in that situation, the last part of the round, mm -hmm. the one thing that I hated the whole time I was in the NFL was 
when the last pick of the seventh round or the twelfth round when we first got in there, mm -hmm. when that pick was made, that was my I was the most miserable I've ever been because I went back to college football because it was a wild, wild rest west at that time, because you're gonna sign about another twenty five oh yeah undrafted free agents and everybody's after the good ones. Yeah. You know, the guys that you've just got ranked in there, you know, there's guys you have ranked in the seventh round a lot of times that, mm -hmm. that uh, make it into undrafted free agency. Sure. It's all kind of all over the board then. It's it's darts. Mm -hmm. But the it's it's miserable because you're you're scrambling between guys that are giving out the money and you've got this guy and the agent's saying this and you're selling them on coming to our ball club. The guys you pick in the seventh round, you don't have to deal with. You just pick them, and they're part of your team. Throw one out there if you see one of the guys that you liked uh, that came late because you were talking about speed from one of them. But, you know, they go out and they get a guy from Notre Dame, a guy from BYU, Missouri, San Jose State, uh, Central Florida, LSU. So they signed a handful of them. Uh, you got – a lot of guys that potentially could make special teams, wide receivers, cornerbacks, right. uh, those types of guys. Well, you know, with the undrafted free agents, mm -hmm. along with the guys they got in the sixth and seventh round, they got the guys they needed to fill out the draft. And, mm -hmm. and out of that, you're hopeful that those guys will, you know, some of them will come on. Uh, and you notice that they got a lot of corners and, mm -hmm. and wide receivers. I think they took three wide receivers and two corners in the – in the uh, undrafted free agency pile, right, right. Those are the guys that get hurt the fastest. The the you know those are soft tissue inju mm -hmm. injuries. You got to have them. You got to have them on your ball club to start with. Yeah. The guy I'm kind of uh, interested in seeing on the mm -hmm. field is Caleb Hayes yeah. from BYU. Not because I think he's a great football player. I haven't even watched him. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I do know about him is he runs four three one and he has a forty yard vertical jump. So Hello. you can't coach those two things. Those two things you either have or they don't. Yahtzee. So you got some guys with traits down there that you know that you deem are important, and mm -hmm. it might be one trait for one guy, and it might be three traits for somebody else. I love and it. And hopefully this guy Hayes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of have zeroed into him because yeah. he played four years. He started for four years, two years at Oregon State right. and two years at BYU. He had something like 40 passes broken up. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how good a football player he is, yeah. but they must have liked him, number yeah. one. And and uh, that's that's good. Yeah, a ton of experience, and it looks like good experience. Right. That's that's good. I love that. That's kind of maybe the guy that they're going for, leadership qualities, all that type of stuff. All right, great stuff, man. That, that was fun. We'll get to rookie minicamp. We'll get out to the OTAs, and we'll just see how everything goes. I can't wait. I can't. That's what I like, you know, being on the field. Mm -hmm. I just have to hope that they don't have a kicker that kicks the ball <laughs> ten yards outside of the goalposts and hits me in the head. You got that guy cut though, coach. Yeah, I got him cut. Yeah, I, I was still working. I was still working in the end. I told Doug Peterson, I said, "Listen, I helped you out today." Yeah, yeah exactly. You helped make that cut, that <laughs> roster cut. That was going to be a tough decision. All yeah. right, coach. As always, good stuff. Yep. Thanks, Dave Joe. Campo, Joe C. We'll talk to you again next week with a little Campo and Joe.